Yes. Thank you so much for welcoming us today. I know it's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful, wonderful offices. Could you please briefly introduce yourself for the audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Naut. I am the CFO at Fairphone uh, and one of the two managing directors we have at Fairphone. Um, and yeah, like a typical scale-up, if you are uh, having a certain role, typically you wear multiple hats. So typically I'm responsible, of course, as a CFO for the financial side, but also on the operations side of the company. So in the end, to ensure that this phone is, is made um, and delivered to our customers. Um, yeah, so broad. Um, yeah, and, and enjoying myself at Fairphone. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. So, so what is Fairphone exactly? How would you define the mission and the purpose behind it? Yeah. Now, Fairphone is a, a very young company that uh, yeah, delivers and develops a, a modular smartphone, uh, a phone that is completely fair to people and planet. Mm -hmm. um, we started doing that five years ago. And we are growing um, and, and reaching more and more customers uh, and convince them to choose a phone that is, yeah, as I said, fair and sustainable. Thank you. Thank you. And if we think about the smartphone industry, the, the telecom industry, it's one of the most polluting. Uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, expected that we reach about 14% of global emissions mm -hmm. uh, because of the telecom industry by 2040. How is that? Why is this industry so polluting? What practices um, are uh, responsible for that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. It's that's a big a, one. That's it's a big a, one. That's a big one, obviously. Yeah, and yeah, the, the first thing that comes to mind is plant obsolescence. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in the end, the, the longer you keep your phone alive, uh, the smaller the, the env environmental footprint of it. Um, so that's also why we strive for longevity, where other brands basically want to motivate you to buy a new phone as soon as possible. And that is, I think, the, yeah, the, the best start. If you would not, uh, typically phones are, are bought every two and a half years. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, if that would be five years, then we already have the envir environmental footprint. So I think that practice of plant obsolescence, of uh, gluing the phone together and not providing software upgrades anymore after a number of years, or the red race on becoming you know, more and more tech heavy and, 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 and increasing the speed, etc., to an extent that is not even per se needed anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we st should stop there. We should aim to keep a phone alive for at least five years. Yeah, absolutely. And so when, when we look at the supply chain, uh, when, when we look at um, uh, everything it takes to produce the phone, um, yeah, what is, what is so polluting? Like, it, it, I, I read that um, the process of, of making a phone is more polluting than the, all the emissions uh, that are uh, responsible when you use your phone for two years. So when you make a phone, basically, um, it's more polluting than using your phone for, uh, for two years. Yeah, no, for sure. So in the end, I think roughly 80% of the, the CO2 emissions uh, are, 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 are spent on the production process. Yeah. So in the, in the end, a, a, a smartphone is a hugely complex product. I mean, there are 400 components in there and all those components are, you know, the, the most rare uh, materials are in there. Uh, you need uh, 100 different suppliers. Um, mm -hmm. and, so, and in the end, the fabrication process of all those components and all those parties and all the logistics and sending all those components and assembling all those components, that is in the end causing the biggest uh, uh, yeah, pollution, basically. Yeah. So it's not charging your battery. Yeah. It is really about exactly. the production process. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that there's a misconception here. Uh, people don't really think too much about the production, more about using electricity, energy. And, and that's, that's a point I wanted to, yep. to bring up. Um, there's also a so social issues that are related to the production of phone. And, and that's a big one, too. Yep. Uh, for example, the production of cobalt. Uh, yep which is, uh, for example, in uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, there's about 60% of the production of cobalt comes from there. Yep. Um, and sometimes practices can be uh, concerning in terms of, of human rights. For example, the yep. poor condition for workers, sometimes there's, there's child labor. Yep. Um, uh, workers are paid maybe 2 or $3 a day. So how is Fairphone addressing that issue and uh, making sure that on the entire supply chain, these things are not happening. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's not an easy task. Yeah? So we, we try our, try our best, uh, and we are making progress. So I think to to just recap, you know, Fairphone is aiming for for four uh, 
uh, uh, goals. Uh, basically, it's the fairness throughout the value chain. So, mm-hmm. as you said, from the mines in Congo, but also you know gold mines, uh, all the mines where all the materials are mined, until the, the the production process, let's say, in the factory in China, where we see a lot of let's say modern slavery, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, until uh, 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 yeah the, the actual production of the phone and the delivery to uh, to, to Europe in our case. Uh, so the fairness to the people is one. Uh, the mar- modularity is two, uh, where we really want to extend uh, the, 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 the life uh, of a phone. Um, uh, we, we also want the phone to really include fair materials. Yeah. Uh, so it yeah. is really about uh, recycled plastics. It's also about fairly traded uh, gold or cobalt or tin or aluminium, etc. Um, yeah, and, and in the end, we, we also provide software upgrades for a long, long time because also software is really a topic that you should not underestimate because, you know, the, the hardware is one topic, the software is an important one as well because if the software is not up to date, yeah, then in the end you also stop using your phone. If your Netflix app is not working anymore because of the software, yeah, yeah then you put your phone away and buy a new one. Yes. And that is also something we really want to uh, avoid. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So please t- tell us more about the product. So yep. um, uh, how does it work? Why is it uh, different from uh, another smartphone? What are the biggest differences, for example, with a, uh, compared to an iPhone or a Samsung that a lot of people use? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so I think the most, uh, so this is the Fairphone 4. Yeah. And I think the most clear thing that I can do is open it. Yes, please do. So uh, Thank you. we are the only smartphone that also pays attention to the inside of the phone. Uh, we also say here it's yours to open and uh, yours to keep. Wonderful. Uh, so if your battery uh, is dying, then you just take it out and you order a new one on the web shop and you put a new one in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the camera, you see a lot of screws here. You can take the camera out, you can take the bottom module out, you can take the display out. So basically the most easy explainable concept is that the phone is yours to keep because you can repair it, you can upgrade it. Uh, Yeah, and we do everything to in the end make this phone uh, last longer. And and if, if for example, my, my phone, my Fairphone, breaks down, yep. um, how, can I, how can I do it myself? It, it looks very easy, yep. but, but basically how does it happen? Yeah, so we have all the spare parts available on our web shop. Okay. Uh, in the end you see screws here that you can just take out yeah. uh, and it's, then you can click it out and in. Uh, we have tutorials on YouTube, yeah. it's, it's really straightforward yeah. and you can all do it yourself. That is, that is wonderful. Thank and th- and so that's much. not only set by us, uh, because of course I'm biased uh, working for Fairphone, but we have iFixit, you know, who tests the repairability of, of products. Uh, they score as a 10 out of 10. So in the end, I think it's, it's obvious that this phone is easy to repair. That is, that is, that is wonderful. And, and for how long would you say um, Fairphone users keep their phone? Yeah, we aim for five years. Five years, yeah. yeah. So I saw 4.5 4. years in, in average. Yeah. Um, now we aim for five. At the moment, we, we, we target ourselves to first achieve the 4.5. Yeah. But in the end, we, we keep on raising yeah. the bar. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then we will go to five, to six, to seven. So okay. we need to start somewhere. Yeah. As I said, the average now is 2.5 years for overall the industry. Uh, yeah, I think if we achieve 4.5 for our product, that's a good start. But then yes, you know, that's just the beginning. Absolutely, that is, that is, that's crazy. Um, now, if we, if we can talk about impact. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, measuring impact is super important. So how do you do that? I know you've developed KPIs, you have different... Uh, teams for these KPIs that are aligned with the mission. Can you please elaborate on, on these? Yeah, yeah. So we uh, have seven KPIs that we, you know, really have in the face of every employee uh, every month. Uh, two out of the, two out of the seven are financial, yeah. um, and five are basically uh, on impact. Um, the financial ones are also important because our mission also is to establish a market for fair, sustainable electronics. And we do believe that in the end, purpose and profit go hand in hand. Uh, so we are not an NGO. Uh, so we also really believe that profit is not a dirty word. Absolutely. Uh, so we want to show that you can achieve profit through purpose. Uh, so the financial KPIs are also important because also we want to you know, be here and, and, and stay here. And for that, you and in the end, need to be able to keep your pants up. So that is the why we want to also show the industry that you know there is also money to be made by by doing good. So therefore, the financial KPIs are financial, but also linked to to an uh, to an impact. 
Uh, the other five are pure impact KPIs. And for example, you know, I, I said that we target indeed the KPI is 4.5 years, where we want to show that our customers use their phone uh, 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 that long. At the moment for this phone is difficult because it was just launched. Yeah. So we cannot prove that it is uh, you know, existing so long. So what we do there is we, we, we test uh, our customers and ask them how long they think they will still keep this phone. Uh, and the trust that they have uh, on, in us is, is, is one measure. Uh, but also, how do we get that trust? By making spare parts available easily, by giving software upgrades, but also doing that for the Fairphone 3, our previous phone. There we also provide support and the Fairphone 2 that was launched in 2015 and yeah, we still provide software support there. So there's a lot of trust from the community uh, and, and, and they rate us every month again, you know, how, how high that trust is. Mm -hmm. And the moment we would, you know, not provide spare parts or not uh, provide software upgrades, that trust will go down and then we can, you know, see that as an early warning. Absolutely. In the end, we want to also show in five years from now that this phone is still, you know, running. Absolutely. So that, that is one. Uh, so yeah. let, let, me walk, let me walk <laughs> no, through please, please, uh, go ahead. others. Go ahead. I, an important one is, you know, what you can't see in this phone uh, at first sight is the, is the fairness to, uh, to also people and planet. We use fair materials in there. Uh, so recycled plastics, uh, this recycled back cover, for example, is a good example. But in the end, uh, a lot of materials in the phone are there and people are not realizing it that there's gold in it, there's yeah. cobalt in yeah. it, there's lithium in it, there's tin, aluminium, and uh, aluminium frame. And all those materials in the end are mined, yeah, let's say not always in fair conditions to people. You know, you mentioned child labor, conflict areas, unsafe conditions, uh, cobalt. You have a lot of uh, uh, artisanal mining in, in, in Congo, for example, where people go really deep under the ground under poor uh, circumstances. Shafts collapse, people die. Uh, yeah, and those circumstances are really the circumstances that we want to avoid. So we have a, a mix of 14 materials that we focus on, uh, that we want to source uh, fairly. Um, uh, and that is also where there, 70% is our target to, to, to achieve, to source 70% of those materials fairly. And that is really easier said than done. Yeah, um, yeah. I can imagine. But, 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 but I mean, it, it all starts with paying a premium. So we are, in the end, uh, our customers and, and in the end, indirectly us to our suppliers are willing to pay a premium to also motivate the industry to, you know, spend a bit more on fairness. But on that note, it's cheaper than an iPhone. It's cheaper than, than, than a Samsung. So how do, how do you manage to, to, to do that? Yeah, that, that's not really the case. Okay. Uh, so in the end, you okay. can make a phone as cheap as you want, but then you have to lower the specs. Yeah, so definitely, we, definitely. We need to compare apples and apples. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Makes sense. In, in, in this case, let's talk about an Apple. In, an Apple phone of 1,000 euros yes. is more expensive, but to be honest, the tech specs are also better, right? So in the end, we, we, we don't compete with all phones. In the end, you need to, to choose your specs. Uh, and if you okay. would, would purely look at the tech okay. specs, then on tech specs, our phone, let's say, is 50 euro to 100 euro more expensive than others. And that okay. actually is driven by a couple of things. And one thing is we are small, so we operate on a small scale, economies of scale. So therefore, we are slightly more expensive. But the majority of it is because we do pay a premium okay. for gold. We do pay a living wage to the people in the factory in China. Uh, what other brands don't do, let's yes. not forget about that. Yes. Uh, but also the modularity, uh, this, the, providing a phone that you can take apart. In the end, of course, the 11 screws that are in here, uh, the frame, uh, the components that enable modularity are typically more expensive than gluing it together. Uh, so the production process in the end um, ensures that also the cost price of the phone is a bit higher from that perspective. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. And I think one, one part of your mission is also to encourage the, the entire industry to, to make the shift. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess the education angle is quite important as well. How do you manage to educate people on, on everything that's happening right now uh, in the industry? And, and yeah, how do you encourage uh, big firms to, to make that, that transition? Yeah. Yeah, we, we Fairphone started as an awareness campaign yeah. um, about the, the materials in your phone and how they are mined. So that is how, how Fairphone started uh, almost 10 years ago. So we still try to do that to make people aware. In the end, we saw that 
trying to create awareness was not enough because nobody was following uh, and nobody was waking up by us. So in the end, we said, okay, guys, if you don't want to start creating fair products, then we will start doing it. Yeah. And in the end, lead by example. Yeah. So that is uh, the biggest thing we do. But we are very transparent in everything we do. So we really talk and, and, and uh, present a lot. We are always willing to explain our story to, to, to others. Um, and in the end, you know, in the end, by launching a product in the market, we, we actively show to consumers, but also to the industry that there is, you can make a difference, you can do it differently. And we typically also want to partner a lot yep. with, with, you know, if you look at uh, the company as a fair fund, we are a small company, but we work with all the big brands and partners uh, yeah. so you know deutsche telecom or vodafone yeah. or orange yeah. they all they all uh, have us in their portfolio so in the end we are in contact with all those parties we we provide them an alternative to the samsung and the apples so they are also actively launching us they are also more and more talking about us to their customers and in the end we also work throughout the value chain with a lot of parties sourcing materials and they are also trying to create partnerships and alliances mm -hmm. And a good example, for example, is that we, we have the Fair Cobalt Alliance. Yeah, uh, so so Fairphone was one of the founders of the Impact Facility. Um, because our idea is, in the end, we need scale. Yeah. And the bigger you are, the more impact you can have. Uh, and we don't want to you know, have a unique uh, advantage over others. We want others to join. So this is why we thought, okay, we should not keep it within Fairphone. We should, you know, create a, 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 a yeah, a basically a legal entity that can do that. Yeah. The Impact Facility is trying to get more and more partners on board. Uh, Fair Cobalt Alliance is one example, where, for example, also a company like Tesla is involved, because in the end, uh, yeah, the more partners we can uh, uh, find and the more yeah, power we can create and the more mass we can bring to it. Yeah, the more impact you can have. And if Tesla, who is really keen to, in the end, uh, uh, create uh, more fair batteries uh, and source the materials that they need, lithium, mm -hmm. cobalt for batteries in a more fair way, yeah, if they can you know, uh, really support, in the end, us, yeah. then, of course, the, yeah, we can really increase our impact. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, thank you so, so much for your insights today. That was uh, very inspiring. I hope that... Um, uh, a lot of people in the audience can also be inspired by, by these thoughts. One last question. How would you define Fairphone in three words? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, fair, the, the, the best word is fair. Yeah, definitely. Everything we do is about fairness. So I think that is a, is a no-brainer. Uh, we are really diverse. Uh, in our company, we have 24 nationalities. Mm -hmm. We have actually we have more women than men working at Fairphone, which is for especially a tech company quite yeah, quite unique. Definitely. Um, yeah, and I think sustainability, uh, you know, the fairness to planet is 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 for sure one of uh, the other words that is that fits as well. Thank you so much. Do you have any thoughts, any last comments uh, that you'd like to share with uh, with the audience? Yeah, now we always say uh, change is in your hands. So, you know, buy a, buy a fair. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers.